It's um sometime. Hi guys, can you guess the title of my next video? Oh. Hurry up! Write your guess in the comment section below. Which is the best sleeping position? Mine! All right, let's see. Sleeping on our back allows our spine to rest in a neutral position, preventing neck and back pain. Also, as the face is not pressed against the pillow, it avoids over-wrinkling. However, this position is prone to more oh. snoring. Sleeping on our stomach prevents snoring but makes it difficult to maintain a neutral spine position. It puts pressure on our joints and muscles, leading to numbness, neck and back pain, etc. Sleeping on our side keeps the spine elongated and prevents neck and back pain. Sleeping especially on the left side decreases acid reflux, improves blood circulation, digestion, etc. However, side sleeping presses our oh. face against the pillow and increases the chances of wrinkling. Some people even curl up tightly while sleeping on one side. This restricts breathing. Now, since all positions have advantages and disadvantages, there is no best position. But if sleeping in a specific position is causing problems, you can switch to other <laughs> positions for better results. Hmm. Why are some people huh? double jointed? Because they are aliens. <laughs> nah. Huh? A joint oh. is an area where two bones meet with the help of ligament. Joints enable us to bend various body parts oh. to a certain extent. However, some people can bend their body parts more than normal. Such characteristic is called joint hypermobility. It is said that hypermobility is because the individual has more or double joints which give him extended range of motion. However, this is incorrect. Hypermobility in some people is the result of flexible oh. ligaments which enable their body parts to bend more than normal. Dude, that really looks creepy. Besides this, hypermobility can also be seen around ball and socket joints, which involve the ball-shaped end of one bone fitting into an indentation on the other bone. The shallower the indentation is, the greater the range of motion, thus giving that individual hypermobility. Hmm. How is coffee decaffeinated? Using a vacuum cleaner. Oh. Nah. Coffee contains mm. caffeine. Caffeine oh. boosts our energy and keeps us focused for a short duration. However, caffeine can oh. also cause headaches, oh. nervousness, etc. Hence, decaffeinated coffee is a very good alternative. Mm. Now, there are various methods to decaffeinate coffee. Ah. One of them is solvent-based method. In this, green coffee huh? beans are first soaked in hot mm. water for several hours. This causes caffeine and flavor of coffee to get dissolved in hot water. Now, in the second step, the green coffee beans and hot water are separated. Then, using various solvents like methylene chloride or ethyl acetate, oh. caffeine is removed from this water. Then this water, which still has the flavor mm. of coffee in it, is added back to the coffee beans so that they reabsorb mm. the flavor. In this way, coffee is decaffeinated without compromising its flavor. Hmm. Topic, thermoregulation. <laughs> huh? Why do dogs pant? Because they want to tease us. No, they pant for thermoregulation. Thermoregulation is the process by which organisms maintain their internal body temperature. Oh well, I use an air conditioner. Oh, you're unbelievable. When we humans feel hot, mm. the sweat glands which are present all over our body produce sweat. Sweat is about 99% water. This water takes our body heat and evaporates, helping us to lose heat. <laughs> now, dogs also have sweat glands. However, they are present under their paws. But as their paws are small and are mostly mm. used to stand and sit, sweating through them to lose heat is mm. not enough. Hence, dogs pant. During panting, they take their long tongue out and breathe heavily. Due to this, the water in their saliva evaporates taking their body heat, thus helping in thermoregulation. <laughs> Is spicy food bad for you? Obviously, because whenever I eat spicy food, my mouth seems to be on fire. This is because spicy food generally contains chili peppers. 
Chili peppers have a chemical called capsaicin. When capsaicin comes in contact with our tongue, it activates the heat-sensing receptors instead of our taste buds. As a result, our brain thinks that our mouth is on fire. So, shall I call the fire brigade? Oh, just listen. Capsaicin present in spicy food is not necessarily bad for everybody. Only those people who have a low tolerance level or don't have a habit of eating spicy food can experience some problems like burning mouth, irritation of the stomach lining, heartburn, etc. Hmm.